Okay, class, we have uh, project one here. Uh, this is the uh, preliminary impression of our first case, maxillary, full upper and full lower denture. Uh, this is the model that I had poured from the alginate, similar to the uh, six that you have in the classroom that you poured today. The first thing we want to do is analyze the impression or analyze the model. We've already analyzed the impression. It's gone now. But uh, we analyzed the model and you can see some bubbles here, um, positive ones, um, most likely from air bubbles in the alginate or even a saliva collection if it was in the patient's mouth. Uh, these were done from our uh, uh, contrived mannequin models. But still, uh, I think a, a good rule of thumb on a preliminary impression, uh, this would be okay to eradicate these bubbles with an instrument. You can use your number seven, you know, Hollenbach instrument, Lacron, and try to uh, eliminate these small uh, bubbles. If there's some in the sulcus, you can kind of estimate where the sulcus <clears throat> is. I have one way back here in the... Just gonna take the bubble off. Now, be careful, don't start surgerizing the model beyond uh, you know the limits of the anatomy that were once there. So now that I've uh, taken the bubbles off, I'm gonna make sure that I have all the anatomy here and, and you can practice your incisive papilla, your roux guys. You can practice your model analysis on your preliminary impression. Um, tuberosities and it looks like this hamular notch here is missing looks like a pull in the alginate so i have the other side to go by i'm just going to reduce a little bit now keep in mind we're not making a denture on this model this model is for either a diagnostic purposes or most likely a custom tray which would be the next step in our workflow of analog full dentures and the custom tray now uh, will be using a different impression material. Uh, the dentist at this time will decide whether it will be a functional impression, usually with a polyvinyl siloxane, whether it's heavy body, medium or light, and the addition of compound, or a mucostatic impression, which I think would be a very extra light or light or zinc oxide eugenol impression. Generally speaking, these days in the marketplace, now this is in the dental laboratory marketplace, uh, receiving work from the uh, DDS. Uh, there seem to be, hopefully not using alginate, but I've seen that, uh, most likely polyvinyl siloxane, uh, generalizing here in Ontario. Uh, so it'll be a functional impression. But what we need to do is with our pencil, you can see these strong frenums here uh, that have been blown out from the alginate impression, being overextended or overstretched. Looks like we have one, two, three, four here. One on the, uh, maybe a smaller version of one here. On the first quadrant, a uh, strong one down the midline, and two down in the second quadrant. Uh, these here have been overextended. And if we were to create a denture on a model like this, uh, these would prevent the denture from seating or it would be dislodged immediately. Um, if you could uh, assimilate like a trampoline effect on these muscle attachments. So we should take our pencil and usually the deepest part of the sulcus and try to imagine if we can read the impression of where the attached and detached mucosa is because this is going to be our denture border, definitely the border of the tray. So if I use this for illustration, everything outside this line towards the base of the model, this is a muscle attachment. Do I know 100%? No, but I think I'm pretty close. I can see where it starts to go uh, back up to the cheek muscles. And I'll draw these kind of uh, hash marks here. You can see outside this uh, border, which is an estimated or guesstimated border that I'm reading the impression of where the attached and detached mucosa is on this preliminary impression around this frenum, which are the most critical areas. 
I see a, a couple of palatine fovea, which is kind of uh, demarcating my vibrating line to the soft palate. So I'm going to stay uh, slightly anterior to those with the tray, and the dentist can elongate the tray or the impression onto the soft palate if they wish. So, again, what am I doing here? Demarcating the extent or the border or the line that I believe to be between the detached and attached to me closer. If you have a problem identifying in a certain area, you can ask your uh, instructors in the classroom. So I've outlined the uh, pretty much the denture border extension, but now there's two ways to make custom trays. And this is our first one. So I'll keep it to the basic um, requirements. Um, we're, we need to create a spacer for the custom tray. The custom tray is going to make out of, be made out of a light cure uh, acrylic. It can be also used as a self-polymerization acrylic, but here in the uh, classroom and pretty much in the marketplace, it seems to be self-polymerized or, uh, excuse me, light cure sheets. And they come in uh, sheets of different thicknesses and varieties and colors. Um, this one's probably more apt to a base plate, but it can be used and adapted for a custom tray, which I think it's try to grab one that's close to the one we're using. So... Um, a couple of rules of thumb here. We need to know what kind of impression is going to be taken. Now, most dentists is going to take a functional impression. I think a real uh, important issue for the custom tray that it does not interfere with the soft tissues, meaning there's no undercut. As you can see, I'm taking base plate wax from my Bunsen burner with my number seven and creating a layer of wax all the way around. Now, you could bring the wax right to the line but since there's going to be no tray beyond the line and then it's easier for separation, I'm going to probably block out all the way down. But I do have a line drawn on my model, which is going to aid me in uh, reducing the length of my light cure tray. I'll show you that momentarily. Now, this object, this object, this product in the laboratory, um, I think it retails around between... 38 and 43 dollars maybe more so there is a uh, economy of scale here meaning uh the day is not to be spent on one custom tray i mean obviously this is school so our goal is different we're just going to try to achieve the fundamentals but in the marketplace uh, this is a uh, you know 20 minutes So, I'm flowing a sheet of wax, pretty much even thickness, all the way around my model. Now, this is a very simple model, meaning there are no huge bony undercuts in the tuberosity area or this anterior region or the canine eminence region. Now, we're going to stop with half a model. So I'm creating a spacer for the impression material. Although conversely to that is if the dentist does not insert the tray all the way into the patient's mouth, this impression material can be as, as thick as the impression is as uh, inserted or the, the tray is inserted in the patient's mouth. So I think to speed things up, I could take a one sheet of wax, an even thickness of wax, and I could put this around the whole model. Now, please don't get confused. I've done it in two separate ways. I started flowing wax by hand to make a small shim of wax, but being a realist, I wanted to simulate that for blocking out undercuts. And then one sheet of wax, of base plate wax, would be the average, not too depressed onto the model. So it's. And to make it easier for you to understand, I can take this wax off, the first one. I think my model was slightly wet. 
So this wax is put on to block out any undercuts or in some laboratories, that's all they're using is just a shim. So we can take all this wax off. I mean, we have one tray to make here. I just want to kind of cover as many bases as I can. So let's go back to the one sheet of wax all the way around. I would go all the way down into the sulcus, provided you have, provided you have your line drawn on your model to aid and guide you in uh, trimming the extent of the tray. And you can use a variety of instruments here. You can use your number seven. You could use a Bard Parker knife. You could use your plaster knife. Now, in the textbook, it shows you bringing wax to the line, which is okay, providing you don't extend the tray past the line. But here at school, I've noticed many students always drawing a line and then superseding the line with any thing they do. And then you have this kind of ledge or a rim lock built into the tray, which I don't think is necessary. So a nice, even sheet of wax extended all the way down. I went past my line. I know that as long as I got no air bubbles here, making it too bulky. I've blocked out undercuts prior. I see where the freedoms are going to be. Now, naturally, no wax on the land area of your model. Inside the land area, as I've just overcompensated on this first quadrant. I've also extended the wax past the soft palette. With no intention of making a tray that long, Although we need to talk about the science of the light cure can bond to the gypsum. So I'm using wax here as a separator going beyond. If I have a short wax, then I'll have to put some separator on the model or Vaseline or something, some kind. So there we have it. If you want to use an alcohol torch, we can smooth it off. But remember, this is going to be the negative part of the tray. So even a few, a little bit of rough surface is probably good to enhance in the mechanical retention of the impression material. There we go. So in comes our light cure tray. Now. Be very gentle. Try to have your nails cut here so we don't put any uh, marks into the tray. I'm going to start with the palette down first. As you can see, I put the palette down first to expel any air and then slowly roll over both sides. You know, we're going from a two dimensional object, it was very flat. Now we're going to three dimension. I shouldn't say two dimensional, but like a flat plane of acrylic. And then almost pinching the front together, almost simulating where my freedom is going to be, it looks like. Make sure this is all the way down. Try not to overstretch this. Adhere it nicely. And then I can take a, uh, a sharp knife. And naturally, for the first uh, cut, I'll probably overestimate the length of my tray. And there you see I've surgerized it. Now, when you're surgerizing the tray or cutting the edge, try not to go on an angle, try to go on a 90 degree to kind of create a, a larger um, border thickness. I don't want a knife edge. The end of the tray should not be knife edged. It's going to hurt the patient if the dentist goes in. And then plus, if they go in just to try the tray in at first, it's going to hurt the patient, possibly. We want like a 90 degree edge to the tray that can hold material. The material can stand up. Now, the longer you try to uh, outline 
and I've taken the freedoms out here, then the less trimming there is to the tray. If you cut too much from this stage, uh, you can't add it back after it's cured. So I've taken the nose off here and tried to smooth these two sections together. A uh, little suture of the uh, light cure. Now you do have a lots of time, unless you're working under like intense lights where this is going to set off quickly or the material's aged. We've got lots of time. Pretty much as much time as you need before things start to set up. So I've gone around the two freenums. I went around the anterior freenum. I erred on the longer side of the tray. Inside the land area, that's why it's important for your model to have a land area. So that kind of helps you guide you in the length. And all these little bits you can collect together. Put all into one. And we need to make a handle for this tray. It would be impossible for the dentist to take this out of the patient's mouth. We need a handle for the tray. Now the handle, uh, assuming, I'd like to assume this, that the dentist is going to border mold or muscle mold this impression. So the handle on a full denture, uh, the handle on a full denture custom tray should be perpendicular to the ridge, meaning at 90 degrees, straight up. Maybe at a 10 degree angle at most, meaning a 10 degree angle this way, but not way out. For many reasons we're going to talk about when we talk about the uh, final impression technique. We don't want the upper lip in the way to kind of deflect the soft tissues. We can't have the tray too long as it's going to interfere with the lower ridge and the patient won't be able to open their mouth that wide to take the impression. So here I've got roughly if you want a, a rule of thumb here or a guide, I've got like 10 millimeter height tray from the top of the ridge, 15. And we already know that the occlusion rim is going to be 22, and that's to the middle line of the, yeah, I'm already up at 27. So I left myself a little bit of tray here to trim to kind of give it some shape. Now, this area here, you can kind of blend in or smooth in with the end of your uh, number seven. So this light cure doesn't look like it was just stuck on. We want it to bond nicely and not break off. This tray is going to go in, inside, uh, in and out of the patient's mouth frequently. And if I've overstretched it now, I'm going to cut it back a bit more. Remember at 90? But we're a little bit on the long side, so we're going to trim at 90, the uh, the borders. So this is going to go into the light cure box. There's different types, pretty much UV light. One minute on this side, one minute off the model. So the dentist is going to use a custom tray to get, replicate the soft tissues in more detail, hopefully with no bubbles. They're going to use an uh, impression material, which is going to give them the better detail. They're also going to use an impression compound, um, usually around the border and the post-am area of the denture or the post-seal. 
around the vibrating line. And that um, compound looks something like this. It comes in sticks. Uh, it's a bit of old school. It comes in different um, uh, colors, which gives it a different flow temperature between, between when it's uh, uh, soft to be utilized and then when it's set. So it has a really short working time, 10, 15 seconds. Um, now this is a stock tray. While we're waiting for our other tray to cure, and if this stock tray or any tray is put into the patient's mouth uh, excessively, this is going to bottom out on the teeth, is it not? Or bottom out on the ridge, as you see, some of the preliminary impressions bottomed out on the impression. So the first thing the dentist is going to do is using compound or heavy body silicone is to try to make some compound stops. Now I'm simulating with this steel tray here, this compound tr uh, stock tray. I'm waiting for the R's to uh, cure. And this is, you can see, it's uh, a short working time. The dentist will put maybe three or four of these in to the tray and then insert this into the patient's mouth basically uh, to raise the tray off the tissue. This is an impression compound. So it is an impression material in itself. So this will be put inside the patient's mouth as to the extent that the dentist wants it to go uh, vertically. And usually three, possibly four stops uh, hopefully not on the incisive pillow, which may be mobile. So four uh, uh, locations in the patient's mouth that are stable. So let's say canines, first molar area, I'm guessing. And then this, these materials are, this is all put in the patient's mouth first. And then the uh, extent of that it's put into the patient's mouth, this is an impression material. So I'm using my finger as the impression on a soft tissue. So uh, these stops will create the thickness of the impression material. Should have left that one alone. I tried to show you from the side here that the thickness of this material right here, these four stops, basically it's a vertical stop for the tray in the patient's mouth. If you leave the light cure uh, too long, more than a minute, uh, the wax will start to melt under the heat of the lamp. So here's my model. I should take this first layer of wax here that I was sloppily demonstrating. Spacer. Another reason why I don't like putting it on unless I have to. Messy. I get to steam it off. So the dentist would take the tray. Remember, this is a stock tray. This is not a custom tray. Let me do that back one again so it doesn't fall off. I'm just waiting for the other minute for the underside of my custom tray that I'm fabricating. Generally, the dentists use a water bath to control the temperature of this these, so it doesn't burn the patient. So this would be put in the patient's mouth as a custom tray, and those stops would create the space, the same space as my wax has done. Now, I use the wax to give the dentist some more leeway left and right of where to put the tray in. So if this is my custom tray and the dentist puts the, dent the tray in this way, uh, I think the ridge is hitting the rim of the tray. So the dentist have to have some dexterity to line this up. I've given him this much space. I mean, if the dentist starts to put the tray in sideways from the patient's side of the mouth, it's not gonna work. Let's get our custom tray now.
There we go. Completely cured. And I can see where the line is now. I've over, I've gone over the line. Um, you would use your lathe. Uh, I'm going to use a hand piece so I don't have to turn around and use the lathe here. Don't have it on the camera. But it's the same thing, a rotary instrument. Sorry for the suction, but it's dusty. And the more you uh, take care in uh, cutting the length of the tray, then the less dust you're going to create. And you can see here a nice 90 degree edge that I'm creating on my tray over reducing the freedom areas, taking any sharp parts of my tray off. If you're gonna air, it's probably better to air on the short side of the tray. I'll explain that in just a second. We know the back was too long. And if you're not sure, check back with your model. You know, I don't want you to take too much. And you just do it again, if you do. It doesn't take long. I could have cut the back a little bit easier than this one. Just got a little lazy. All the little rough edges are off, 90 degree. Even thickness border, freedom relief. No undercuts. If there's an undercut, you can go in and if you didn't block it out, you can trim it out here. There's no harm in trimming the underside at all. You're just creating more space for some impression material. I mean, microscopic, it's not a huge amount. So you can save it that way. Then your handle. You can put your own uh, flavor of handle on here. But I think the big thing is flavor meaning size, shape. Size is limited to the vertical dimension. Uh, strength hopefully has a strong base to it. Obviously, uh, you're going to grab it like this in the patient's mouth. Maybe this way, maybe two fingers, maybe three, maybe the back two, maybe all five. Because this is going to have a lot of suction to dislodge it out of the patient's mouth after the impression is taken. So I'll simulate here in a second. And you'll see in the, uh, in the textbook and in um, the PowerPoints on your Blackboard, uh, samples of impression material in chapter uh, two, chapter three. I don't want any sharp, anything sharp or near the patient's mouth. That's not comfortable. They're going to lose confidence if the dentist goes in with the tray and then, you know, cuts their lip or something like that or scratches their tongue or just a feeling of discomfort generally. They're not going to enjoy that. So double check with your model. Your line, I'm still a little bit long. Do one section at a time. It's way long here. I could have surgerized the tray a little bit. Neater, closer to the extension that I was uh, trying to achieve, but that's fine. I got a thicker border. Now the freedom, sometimes they're not so, uh, you know, wide. So you'll use a disc, which you'll get from the dispenser if you don't have one already. Be very careful. Some, and then try to open up the freedoms this way. We want the dentist to take the extent uh, impression of the freedoms uh, at their functional limit. We don't want to trap the freedom with the tray. I 
could probably afford to reduce this a little bit more, a little bit more subtle between the two. Not so sharp. Let me reduce that a little bit more. I'm airing on the long side here this morning. It all starts with a, a, a good model. You need to have a good, well, decently, a good preliminary impression. And if it's not, then you can kind of create a good preliminary impression with the advent of some waxes and uh, the knife edge. I think this side is done. This freedom is still trapped here a little bit. I'm going to open it up. We are just exposed. I can go just a hair shorter at the back. Now, uh, the lecture has a bit of a, uh, uh, a, a layer from the reaction on top. If you want to rough it up just to kind of make it look pretty and create all the same um, coloring, or make it look more blended in, I guess. Very slow speed. I'm gonna rinse it off, disinfect it before I give it to the uh, dental office. So there we have our tray completed. Ah, hang on a second, a little bit long here. Perfect. So let's simulate what the dentist would do again now with the tray. Okay, now we've, the tray has gone to the dental office, it's disinfected, it's been washed. The first thing the dentist is going to do is they're going to put some compound stops or heavy body silicone stops. It's not necessary to put holes in the tray unless the dentist asks you to put holes for mechanical retention. Generally speaking, they have some adhesive with this silicone material that'll bond the impression material to the tray. So the dentist is gonna put, now I'm simulating, you're not doing this, please. We are finished with the tray and that's it. The dentist is going to put four compound stops, roughly the same uh, size, hopefully. I mean, they'd have to have some dexterity for this and so. I'm just trying to get that stuck anyway. They're gonna temper it so it doesn't burn the patient's mouth. And they're going to take an uh, impression, not impression, they're gonna put it in the patient's mouth. And you can see the stops now are lifting my tray just slightly above my guesstimation of the attached and detached mucosa. So you can see the space now that's created under the tray. So these four impression compound stops will prevent the tray from bottoming out and overextend it again. We might as well just stick with the alginin. Then the dentist will do a quadrant at a time and they'll muscle trim or muscle mold the functional border limits of the denture. You know, they'll start with the uh, first quadrant or maybe the back quadrant. There's different uh, techniques and, and uh, procedures, whichever one they want to use. This is an impression compound. They're going to temper it. You can't do it all at once because it's just not going to have enough working time. They'll put this into the patient's mouth, go through some grimaces, maybe pull their upper lip down. I'm simulating now. Pull their upper lip down. And that's why I needed that nice square edge border, maybe the philtrum under the nose, pull it down to simulate 
the border, to simulate the border, to get the extension of the labial freedom. We'll do the other side. This is an impression material and it does take time to use and get comfortable using it. I think I'd be lying to you if I said it was easy. And then most dentists try not to uh, use it because it's, it's not easy and it's time consuming. But it does do an excellent job. Again, border molding, moving the patient's lip down, maybe uh, tugging on their upper lip, not too much, not overextending. And this now is deflecting the attached mucosa over the rim, giving me an, a perfect border of my denture. So now my final impression will be exactly at this limit. There's no guesswork. There shouldn't be. I'm just taking some excess off the inside that went underneath. Now again, this is what the dentist would be doing. And they'll go all the way around here. Once they're done, the impression is border molded right to my red line where I was pretty close. Now there's a void. You can see the space under the tray. Let me shut that off. It's noisy. There's a space under the tray. Oh, that's better. That noise always reminds me of my mother coming to vacuum my room at 6 a.m., usually on a Sunday morning, on purpose, I think. Good morning, son. How was your evening? Meanwhile, it just ended like an hour ago, but she's in there with the vacuum. She knows. Great mothers. So, <laughs> sorry, I, I digress. So, the border is done all the way around. I can simulate later live class. And then either the stops are taken out at this stage because we have the borders now as the stop or they're left in depending on the dentist technique and the tray is loaded with the final impression material which you've seen in some pictures and then the the impression is taken now we have a final impression completed uh, then it's our job now as the dental technician uh to border mold bead uh, excuse me bead and box this final impression not border mold bead and box this final impression to get an excellent result. I've got an example here of a dentist, uh, no custom tray uh, for an immediate complete lower denture. I mean, let's assess this as a final impression, never mind preliminary. We're missing retromolar pads, internal oblique ridge is gone, the buckle shelf doesn't exist, canine eminence, forget it. The tray didn't even get in the patient's mouth. Looks like they're fighting with the patient's tongue to, you know, to get this in. This tray is way off here. Now, you could make a custom tray from this, maybe simulate some extendedness from the anatomy missing and, and shorten it up to here. But I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's not going to create good prosthetics. And if the laboratories move forward, uh, uh, fabricating something on a model like this, uh, naturally, it would have nothing to do with the impression. It would be, well, that laboratory didn't do a good job. As a laboratory uh, a manager or supervisor or owner, we have the obligation to say, I'm sorry, this is not good enough. Try again. Give us another so we could fabricate something. So there you have custom tray 101. Uh, there's lots more to discuss, but I think as a as the beginning, that's a foundation uh, of what we'll move forward with. Remember, uh, take your time. Uh, one minute only in the light cure on each side. Take it off the model so your wax doesn't melt and then we don't turn the light cure units into boil out tanks. Okay, have yourself a great day.